Hi, this is Susanna Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living a Wholesome Life. And we are on week 47, day four of our positive, peaceful affirmations that we are doing every day, Monday through Friday. We are following Dr. Susan Lawton's book, Positive, Peaceful Growth Calendar, that you can buy at Aroma Tools or Oil Life. If you love positive affirmations and you love music therapy, if you love essential oils and you love aromatherapy, I think you're going to really appreciate and enjoy this book. It is simple in its format, but very profound in the changes it can help us make as we are being intentional with who we are. The affirmation for today is, I am the only one thinking my thoughts. Again, we're sharing our thoughts and our feelings with other people. Other people are not mind readers. And the second part of the affirmation is, I have the power with God to heal all past wounds. The, and, and we've talked about that, kind of that, the weekly affirmation in the past. So I'm just going to say, believe believe that that healing can take place believe sometimes healing comes quickly sometimes healing comes um slowly maybe some healing won't happen until we reach heaven and all of that is okay god has promised that he can heal all of our hurts our every hurt the affirmation for today is i learn from my past so I can trust myself now. I learn from my past so I can trust myself now. Now, um, there's three different ways of, our three different orientations that we can have with life. One is just living for the present and, and doing everything in the present. And that's where the, um, oh, I can't think of it right now, but, um, just, you know, those people who are just like live in the present, stay in the present, um, being intentional in the present. And that's that's all good. And then there's some people that are very, very forward thinking. They, their orientation, their time orientation is, um, is forward. So what can we do today so that we can make the future better? And then there's some people who, who are very past oriented and, and um, they're like, how can we learn in the past? From the past what can we how can we study the past and learn from the past so that we don't recreate the problems that we that the past had today and yesterday and so I think that it's good to have a mix of all of those um, a mix of looking to the future and how can we plan and prepare for the future and make the future brighter and um, of staying in the here and now and and um, enjoying the here and now. Today's the only day that we can enjoy. And then also looking back to the past, what lessons can we learn from the past and how can that help us today to be happier, to live better, and tomorrow? So do we want to learn lessons from the past? Yes. Maybe for, um, I love to give journaling suggestions, maybe for our journaling today what we can do is we can just just spend, you know, five, 20 minutes, whatever, however long you like to journal and talk about some of the lessons that you have learned from the past. Do we have to have created all the mistakes to have learned from our past? No, we can definitely learn from other people. So we don't have to create every mistake in order to learn. Um, we can learn from everyone. There's good examples and there's um, of how to do things and there's bad examples and we can learn from both and we can learn from our past experiences too so that we can go on to um, create better lives for ourselves today. So again, the journaling assignment, if you want, the journaling suggestion, taking back the word assignment, the journaling suggestion, I'm so used to homeschooling and giving my children assignments, um, but the journaling suggestion is let's go back, let's look at what we've learned from our past. And and are we living with integrity now? Can we trust ourselves? If we can't trust ourselves, why can't we trust ourselves? If we can trust ourselves, 
why can we trust ourselves? I'm guessing that as we learn from the past and we live better, we learn to trust ourselves more. Okay, so that's the affirmation for today. The song for the entire week is Let It Go by Idina Menzel from Disney's Frozen. It's a super popular song. I would doubt that you haven't heard it right now. I've been having a fun time going through and putting a few different variations. The original version was on Monday, and then since then we've been seeing different groups and different choirs and different performers um, perform that song, and it's a beautiful song, no matter who performs that song, and just letting things go that no longer serve us. And the, the diffuser blend that we've been diffusing the whole week is three drops of geranium, which is the oil of love and trust, and then three drops of grapefruit, which, which is an oil, the oil of honoring our bodies. So we're, we're through this diffuser blend, we are contemplating and I'm feeling a little bit more safe and secure so that we can love and, and trust others better and feeling more safe and secure so that we can love who we are better. When it comes to um, learning from the past so that we can trust ourselves, part of that is are we are part of that trusting ourselves um, comes from the that concept of are we our best friends or are we our worst enemies? Are we are we going down the path that we feel is the best? Are we allowing ourselves to self-sabotage or allowing other people to knock us off of our path? And um, are we our best friends in our heads too? Are we talking to ourselves in, in beautiful, kind, uplifting, complimentary tones, right? Who wouldn't want a best friend like that? Or are we being super critical of ourselves? Are we you know, putting ourselves down, oh, you're not good enough in this, oh, you're bad at that, or, oh, you'll never become whatever, right? Which, how are we talking to ourselves? And if we're not tra talking to ourselves in kind and loving tones, we're gonna have a hard time trusting ourselves. And if we're not staying on the path that we know that we should be going, we're gonna have a hard time trusting ourselves. Can that trust be developed 100% it can we can start talking to ourselves in better ways and we can start staying on the path we know we should be going on more and that will help us trust ourselves and when we can live um at a place where we trust ourselves that's a beautiful beautiful peaceful secure and safe place to be okay so we've already talked about the diffuser blend for the week and now, um, since there was only two oils in the diffuser blend, we're gonna go on to a, an oil that's not mentioned in the edition of the book that I have. It may have been ad, uh, mentioned in past editions, but in the edition of this book that I have, it's not mentioned, and that is pedigrain oil. Now, most people know peppermint oil, they know lavender oil, they might know rose oil, but pedigrain um, might be a new oil for us. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of the background first on pedigree, and then we're gonna be hopping on to the physical and the emotional benefits of pedigree essential oil. So um, the nicknames of pedigree, well, it actually has um, several nicknames. And so we'll be going through, but I'm gonna teach you four of the nicknames of pedigree essential oil. Some people like to call it the oil of ancestry. Some people love to call it the oil of abundant foundations. It comes from the wild orange tree, which is one of the most generous trees because it gives us three different essential oils. So wild orange essential oil, which comes from the wild orange tree, the fruit, it comes from actually the rind um, around the fruit. It, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful, uplifting, super uplifting um, blend or essential oil. Then the wild orange tree from the blossoms gives us the neroli oil. Now wild orange happens to be one of my husband's favorite oils, 
neroli is one of mine. It comes from the flower, the blossom of the wild orange tree. It reminds me of, Fe of springtime in Phoenix. We used to live in Phoenix, Arizona, and it just reminds me of how you, when you would walk to the neighborhood, the, the air was just densely and richly scented with these beautiful orange and other citrus blossoms. So the neroli oil comes from the wild orange tree from the blossoms. And then you also get from the twigs and the leaves of the wild orange tree, you get pentagrain essential oil. So the wild orange tree gives us three essential oils, um, wild orange from the fruit and neroli from the blossom and pentagrain from the leaves and twigs of the tree. Originally, pentagrain came from the, the um, unripe fruit. They used to pick them when they were about cherry sized and then make them into a beautiful essential oil. But they realized that that destroyed too much of the crop. And so now what they do is they let that crop just ripen and to be used for the wild orange. Um, or they pick it as the flower to be used as a neroli. But they make the pentagrain from, again, the leaves and the twigs. So when some people experience the smell of different oils differently. So when Derek smells pentagrain, he definitely picks up that, that orangey um, smell and scent. When I smell the pentagrain, I smell, smell a much more rich, um, earthy, earthy scent. So see how you see um, how you experience pentagrain. Now, a lot of us may be unfamiliar with pentagrain, but the perfume industry is definitely not. In fact, it was used in one of the earliest perfumes um, in modern history, and that is the perfume that's called Eau, Eau du Cologne. And it was originally, now I had to look, what is pentagrain really in Eau du Cologne? And it is. Let me tell you a little bit about this, um, about Eau du Cologne. So it was originally mixed by Giovanni Maria Farina in 1709. And it has since become a generic term, Eau de Cologne, for scented formulations in typical concentration of two to five percent essential oils. And Eau de Cologne, the original Eau de Cologne, was made up of many a mixture of citrus oils, including lemon, orange, tangerine, clementine, bergamot, lime, grapefruit, the blood orange, and the bitter orange. Now we have all of those in doTERRA except for the blood orange. We have the lemon, the orange, the tangerine, the clementine, the bergamot, lime, grapefruit, and bitter orange which is the wild orange. And it also, the Eau de Cologne also contained neroli, which is made from a blossom, lavender, which is a flower, rosemary, an herb, thyme, an herb, oregano, an herb, and pentagrain, which is made from the twigs and the leaves. Jasmine, which is a flower, olive, more of a, I guess you would call it olive a fruit, um, oleaster which i don't know what that is and tobacco which i thought was very interesting to be putting into a perfume but um it was probably a new tobacco was probably more new because from my knowledge they first learned about it um so in the in the 1500s when they discovered well America was kind of discovered in 1492, but we're just gonna say it was for our purposes that it was kind of discovered in the 1500s, and so that's when um, Europe got introduced to tobacco. Anyway, so I guess it had been around for 200 years. I guess it wasn't too new. Anyway, but that's the that's the um, the makeup of this Eau de Cologne, which was one of the oldest perfumes, oldest colognes um, that and also had pentagrain essential oil in it. Now, um, a little bit more about that cologne. That cologne weighs called mineral water as well, and it cost half the annual salary of the average civil servant 
in France, which I thought, okay, I can see why, because you're power packing it with a lot of very, very good essential oils. The shop, Giovanni's shop, opened in 1709 and is today the world's oldest fragrance factory, which I thought was super interesting that since um, they produce that Eau de Cologne, um, it's, it's always, that, that um, shop has always been open. The original water of Cologne, Eau de Cologne, was believed to have the power to ward off the bubonic plague. I'm not telling you that it has those properties, but I think it's interesting that they thought it could. Um, and by drink, they also drank that, um, that Eau de Cologne, um, and they believed that the citrus scent would be exuded from the pores and would repel fleas. And I'm sure um, not that I know, but I'm sure that fleas were a problem back then because they didn't have all the modern ways of cleaning that we do now. So, um, and they went on to say in this article that was from Wikipedia, um, it went on to say that much of the flea shampoo today um, is based on citrus oils because they have um, some evidence of repelling fleas. So, um, when you look at what was in the original Eau de Cologne, the lavender, thyme, oregano, gracious, those are some amazing essential oils to help kill germs. And when you look at the um, lemon, the orange, clementine, tangerine, bergamot, lime, grapefruit, and wild orange, those are some oils that are really good for clear, um, killing germs too. So, um... I don't know, maybe there was some basis on how well it did help people stay well. I don't know, I'm not gonna say um, that it did that, but some people must have thought that it did. Anyway, another nickname for pedigree is lavender for men, and this is why. It's because it has many of the same const constituents, chemical constituents as lavender, has much of the same action as lavender, except it doesn't have that super flowery scent. Again, um, Derek smells a little bit more of the wild orange in this. I smell more of an earthy, uh, um, an earthy scent in this pedigree. But it's, it's great. Pedigree is great for people who might have um, to use, who like that relaxing action that lavender has, that, um, ability to help people sleep better, but who don't like the lavender scent. Pedigree is great for when your heart is racing or when your heart is being erratic. It's also termed the poor man's neroli. Now pedigree does come from the same tree that neroli comes from, right? Uh, and um, neroli, like pedigree, is used in many perfumes and colognes. Pedigree is used in many aftershaves or colognes for its strong antibacterial properties and its musky, almost woodsy odor. So I'm getting that from another site too, that it's musky and woodsy, but that's what I'm smelling. And so if you're looking for a little bit of a, a deeper scent, try some pedigree, try mixing some pedigree into it. Pedigree is not only good for sleep, but it's also good at calming the stress, calming our nervous system. It's calming to our digestive system. It can help calm a, like a spasmodic cough. So if you have a cough that it's just like every once in a while you just cough and you're like, why am I even coughing? Like you just cough every once in a while for almost no reason at all. Maybe putting a couple drops, one to two drops of pedigree essential oil into a carrier oil like coconut oil, maybe two tablespoons, and rubbing that onto your chest and your back or diffusing it can help calm down that spasmodic cough. Pedigree is great for helping to balance our hormones in both women and men. It's great to help clarify the skin, which is honestly a gift of most citrus, citrus oils. But um, you can put a couple of drops into your cleanser or into your moisturizer. I would definitely say to only do this at night, no, at night though, because some some um, sources think that pedigree can help um, make our our skin more photosensitive, and most 
most citrus oils do except for green mandarin. But most citrus oils do um, are great for our complexions, but they do make our skin more photosensitive. So we're gonna only want to use them on our face when um, at night or when we know we're not going out into the sun. Now, if you're using pedigree essential oil like on your chest, on your back, um, on places that are gonna be covered where they're not gonna see the light, you can definitely use the pedigree oil anytime you want to. Pedigree oil is great for, um, so you can also just take uh, some pedigree oil, put it on a, um, a cotton ball, and then just dab that onto the spots that you're trying to clear up. Pedigree is great to put in your shampoo or your conditioner, especially if you have oily hair, to help kind of calm down that. Pedigree is a beautiful natural deodorant, and it's also especially good for those who seem to sweat excessively. It can calm that down as well and help reduce the excessive perspiration. Pedigree is often used in substance abuse programs to aid in detoxification. Emotionally, because pedigree comes from the leaves in the twigs, what do we know about leaves? Well, if, you're, if you've seen a lot of my other videos, you know that leaves, um, they're the, the part that helps the plant um, breathe, right? And also helps it make energy. And um, Chinese medicine believes that we store sadness in our lungs. And our lungs are the part that helps us breathe. So using diffusing pedigree oil or putting it into like a carrier oil, a couple of drops into like two tablespoons of coconut oil or olive oil, jojoba oil, whatever you like, rubbing that on your chest can be so good at helping us release the sadness in our lives. And does every person's life have sadness? Yes, every person's life has sadness. Gandhi once told of a, um, a woman, well, I heard the story about Gandhi, who was once um, instructing a woman, and the woman came to him and said, I've, I've had the death, death of a child, and, and I, I'm so sad, and I can't seem to get over it. And he basically said to her, I want you to go to, to every house in, in your village, and I want you to see if, if there has been sadness from some type of death. And, and she did, and she came back and she said, yes, everyone has had some type, every house has had some type of sadness from loss. And so, um, does everyone, when I say that everyone needs pedigree, well, everyone has sadness, and whether you're using pedigree or something else to help you work through your sadness, I think that's very good. Um, one of my husband's uncles just died this last week, and would I suggest using pedigree to help with the sadness on that? Yes, I would also suggest moving the body. Moving, actually, there's studies that show that moving the body helps our bodies work through our emotions. So um, if you're dealing with some sadness in your life, start moving. Again, it's gonna bring in those endorphins, which is gonna help us lift our mood and help give us the strength to work through the emotional issues that we're trying to work through. Pedigree is great for helping to ground and center us. It helps to calm anxious or panicky feelings. It helps to lighten sadness and it helps to calm anger. It's powerful at stabilizing high strung um, People with high strung temperaments, people with, with great sensitivity, and it helps to um, calm down people with volatile or very angry dispositions. Pedigree is great to use if you've been caught up in emotional drama, whether you have emotional drama going on in your workplace or um, at your school or in, um, in your home. It's great for helping to calm down and help us take a better look at the emotional drama and what's really going on. Pedigree is great to use when we're working with family issues. It helps us honor the good in our family, see the good, and um, helps us remember the good in our family and can help us break the be chain breakers 
for the generational patterns that we don't want it to keep perpetuating down through the generations. It's beautiful to um, help us forge our own path and decide which traditions from our family are right for us, living by our inner heart, our, our, our core beliefs. It helps those who desire to disconnect from family to, to calm down and really look at their family and see, see the benefits, the ways their family has benefited them, and see too just the, the, the power that comes from connecting with family. Again, it's great at helping us remember beautiful memories from the past. So you might want to put some pedigree, like so we're going into Thanksgiving time, Christmas time, New Year's, um, where, you know, and no one's family is perfect. So do we all have things to forgive and forget with our families? Yes. But pedigree, essential oil can help us calm down and remember the good times that we have had together. Pedigree helps with acceptance and trust. If you feel like you've been betrayed by a family member or a friend or a romantic interest, it can help us settle down and calm down and realize, you know, that our relationship is different. If we're maybe we're maybe we've broken up with a past boyfriend and we have a, a new boyfriend and we're not gonna be we're not gonna be carrying the baggage of old relationships. The pedigree is gonna help us to calm down and see the newness of situations. Maybe we've had some tough situations with family members in the past. Well, are we the same person that we were in the past? No. And are these people the same people that they um, were in the past? I don't know. Maybe not. Pedigree helps us to calm down and really look at things as they are now and move forward with things as they are now and to let go of that baggage from the past. It's a great oil to be pairing with the song, Let It Go. Pedigree can help us feel more safe and secure. As we're looking at relationships as they are now, it can help us feel more safe and secure in them. It can help us overcome pessimism and maybe insomnia due to anger from past betrayals. Pedigree can help us lower our defenses and um, and lessen our harsh qualities that um, are sometimes seen in people who are insecure about their own worth or their own position in life. I love that one. I love that one. Do we all have insecurities? Yes. Are we all insecure in some ways with love or with who we are, with um, with different our different attributes, I, I believe that we probably are. We all have some type of insecurities. And when we have insecurities, we can um, not be our best friends. Um, we can be a little bit more clingy. We can be a little bit more needy. We can be a little bit more um, harsh or frightened, which can lead to some harshness. Or it can, frightened, being frightened can also lead to anger. And so it can help calm down all of those hard emotions helping us feel more secure with who we are. Can you see why pedigree would be an amazing oil to put in a perfume? I totally, totally can. It's great for people who start projects but don't, but those projects don't seem to be able to work out. So many citrus oils are an abundance oil and pedigree oil does come from a, the wild orange tree, right? And so, um, because it comes from the leaves and the twigs of the tree, when it can help us release some of the sadness from past, calm down and look at how are we really thinking about money, which I think plays very, very much into abundance issues. Do we think that money is good or bad? If we think that money is bad, we're probably not gonna be making it. Do we think that rich people are good or bad? If we think that rich people are bad, we're probably not gonna be making money. And, um. Do we think that money is hard or easy to make? If we think that money is really, really hard to make, we may not have the, the persistence or the gumption to, to stick in a, a um, game plan long enough to get to where we actually are making some good money. So um, 
And then the last thing that I want to bring up, although there's definitely a lot of different ways to look at money and a lot of different uh, misconceptions we can have about money. But the, the last thing I wanted to bring up today is, do we feel worthy to, to have money? Do we feel worthy to have a lot of money? And if not, where do those where do those feelings of unworthiness come from? Pedigree can help us calm down and relax and think about how we think about money to see are we self-sabotaging in some way so we're not making money? Are we um are we rushing into things? Are we not taking that time to get the foundation, not taking the time to get the knowledge that we need, not taking the time to get all of our kind of ducks in a row? And so is that what's um, hindering our financial projects that we want? So pedigree, again, it can help us relax, help us work through many issues. Pedigree, many people see pedigree as a, as a protective oil now this is why, and I, I do think it's protective, especially in this way, and that's that it can help us stay calm. Oh. <laughs> if I was the fairy godmother, like I would, which I'm totally not, but like, you know, in the fairy godmother, like in Sleeping Beauty, when they're blessing her with beauty, and I don't remember all the other blessings that she gets, but if I could just bless someone to just to have a calm spirit. I just know that they're going to make better choices in their lives because when we are calm, we stay in our prefrontal cortex and that helps us to make decisions based on logic, based on our core values, instead of getting flooded and, and doing things that we later regret. So pattern it can help us stay calm. And for that reason, because it keeps us more in our prefrontal cortex, I think of it as a very, very protective oil, um, oil, essential oil. Because it's so calming, pedigree can be great in times of meditation, in times of journaling, times when we're brainstorming just to help us stay calm and um, stay a little bit more focused. Pedigree can help us stay calm, help us feel safe and secure. It can help us slow down and create strong foundations to better succeed in life. And it's great to you to wear or to diffuse when we're trying to instigate new ideas or new beginnings. Now, what can you blend essential pedigree with? Well, there's lots of things and there's way more things that you can blend it with than I'm gonna have time um, or even have the wisdom to tell you. So so be experimenting with your, your um, essential oils. Do what intuitively feels good, but here are some different ways that you can blend essential oil. If you're looking for a calming blend, you can do five drops geranium, three drops pedigree, one drop jasmine, and one drop rose. Diff um, blending that in your diffuser or even putting it into a roller bottle would be, and topping it off with fractionated coconut oil, would be a beautiful perfume, first of all, but also be very, very calming to, to us. Definitely um, don't put fractionated coconut oil in your diffuser, only put pure essential oils in your diffuser. I was just talking about if you wanted to put it in like a 10 mil roller bottle. You can also um, blend pedigree with mint, like peppermint or spearmint, if you want to be a little bit more focused. You can blend it with um, citrusy smelling oils, like bergamot or neroli or lemongrass for a very, very uplifting blend. You can blend it with cassia, cinnamon, ginger, or cardamom if you want a empowering blend. If you have major things that you're wanting to do that day, you wanna go face the world with confidence. Um, maybe you're going to school, it'd be great to face school with confidence. And so that would be a beautiful blend for that. Now realize that when you blend it with cinnamon, cassia, or um, ginger, well, more more cinnamon and cassia, they can be very, very hot oil. So in a diffuser, that's gonna be beautiful. But if you're, if you're um, blending that and putting it on, I would definitely say put it on your feet. Don't put it on any sensitive parts of your body. You can blend it with cedarwood or vetiver if you want to feel more safe and secure. Also, I would say frankincense would be great oil to blend it to. Um, with to feel more safe and secure 
And um, if you're wanting a little bit more hormone balance, try blending the pedigree with Clary Sage essential oil. So the the emotional bit, um, the negative emotions that pedigree can help with is disowning, wanting to disown your family, wanting to disown where you came from, your origins, your beginning. Um, we, and if you want, or if you want to, if you have negative generational patterns, family patterns that you want to break, if you um, feel loyal, have a loyalty to unhealthy traditions, um, or if you're kind of, again, dishonoring your progenitors, and the positive properties that neroli, I'm sorry, that pedigree can help bring in is pioneering new ways of life. Being the chain breaker for all those negative generational issues. Cultivating healthy t traditions that serve you or your family. And all the traditions that we let go might not be unhealthy, right? We might have had traditions that we did with our children when they were little. And as we're growing up, we're changing the traditions so that because we want the best for our family here and now. So all of the traditions that we like, let go don't have to be unhealthy. They just can be ones that no longer serve us well. And it can help us embrace positive family connections. Again, a pedigree would be a beautiful blend to put into um, a Thanksgiving blend that you have or a Christmas blend that you have just to help with those social connections, help we um, bring up good memories from the past. Okay, so that is the emotional and physical benefits of pedigree essential oil. Again, one that we may not have known um, before, but one that perfumers and, and those in the cologne industry have known for hundreds of years and valued for hundreds of years. The diffuser blend for this week that we're diffusing is two drops I'm sorry, three drops of geranium, which is the oil of love and trust, and then three drops of grapefruit, the oil of honor in your body. You can definitely pop a drop of pedigree essential oil. It's gonna lift the blend and it's gonna it's gonna have all those beautiful emotional benefits that that come with it. The affirmation the song for the entire week is Let It Go by Idina Menzel. The affirmation for today is I learn from my past, so I trust myself now. I can trust myself. I'm gonna put a song, the song that I'm thinking of this one um, is a song from a musical called My Turn on Earth. And it basically says, when I choose the very first step on the road, I also choose the last. So if I don't like the end of the road, I better back up, I know I better back up fast. So just because we're walking down a road, or even if we've been walking down that same road for decades, that doesn't mean that we can't learn from the past and we can't, we can't switch to a different road and create a better here and now for us, creating a better future for us too. So there is no such thing as a point of no return. I don't think that there's a such thing as a point of no return. I think that there's always an ability to turn and make a different decision. The affirmation, and we can learn, we can learn as we do that. There's a saying that says, I can't remember who said this, but um, everyone is doing the best that they know how. When we know more, we can, we can do better. And so let's, let's learn more so that we can do better and feel happier today and tomorrow than we did yesterday. The affirmation for the entire week is, I am the only one thinking my thoughts. So we're, again, we're gonna be sharing our thoughts and our feelings. And the second half is, I have the power with God to heal all past wounds. I believe that every wound will eventually be healed, whether today, whether tomorrow, next year, or whether it's more in heaven, every wound that we've ever had will be healed by God and with our work and effort too. Okay, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, and Living the Wholesome Life. Reminded us all that we have this incredible power with God to make every day a great day. Bye-bye.